thank you all for your patience. Um, we're excited to be here. Now I'm just stalling to wait for the start button to go. How y'all doing today? <laughs> all right. Wait, now it started. Shut up. Okay, so all it takes is for us to take one look at the headlines now to know that unsheltered homelessness is emotional, it's contentious, and it feels hopeless. There's many types of homelessness, actually, and many ways to categorize it. So most commonly, they're categorized along these axes of how sheltered you are and then how often you've been experiencing that kind of homelessness. Most of the headlines you just saw are about unsheltered homelessness on the top half of this uh, graph. And that's defined as when people stay in, quote, locations not fit for human habitation. Unsheltered homelessness is the most hotly debated, not because it's the most pervasive, actually. It's because it's the most visible form of poverty. And among the biggest controversies around it are encampment sweeps. That's when people are evicted from where they've been staying. Sweeps are legally justified by ordinances that prohibit people from sleeping, lying down, or loitering in public. Some claim these laws ultimately improve well-being by getting people into care. Others say these practices essentially criminalize poverty. Whatever your stance on homelessness, pe seeing people removed from any place they're calling home is upsetting, hence the tension. This is a vast oversimplification of the debate as happening between critics who feel that sweeps cannot happen versus its defenders who are in the position of implementing them. We imagine these two groups are super polarized and agree on nothing. Until you talk to them and realize it's a lot more nuanced than that. Those uh, Criticizing the sweeps will concede that it's tough for people to necessarily be able to live anywhere and however they want. That's not great for society. But those carrying out the evictions also see its futility and inhumanity. The only clear thing is, as long as we have homelessness, these two sides are going to have to deal with each other. So enter the naive researcher here, who looks at things like sweeps and wonders, what's their relationship to health outcomes? Specifically, do they affect health, and can we track sweeps to see? Moreover, can we do so as part of a big interdisciplinary group? So what our team is doing is building a database, pictured by this machine, of sweeps, which enlist both sides, the critics and the defenders, the implementers, and the people on the ground. That's good for research, because that helps us build a database that's more comprehensive, because we have the top-down approach. But it's also got the detail of the bottom-up, boots on the ground, bottom up, boots on the ground approach. It also builds an important chance for the two sides to collaborate on something that neither of them initiated, because we did. This ensures our, uh, and this has meant that we have to approach many groups to help us, and they're already plenty busy without us harassing them. Um, and we're also trying to talk to them about something that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people. It's about a system uh, that we know perpetuates structural racism and health disparities. So how do we go about doing this? I have done it by identifying at least one of these three things in every time, in every engagement I uh, go about, uh, which I think anchors any of us in any of our works, and then use them to establish common ground. So I have examples of each. Organizational mission. So this is when groups like those who give out harm reduction supplies or medical care uh, try to do outreach on the ground. They support our project in theory, but they have reservations about what research is going to be doing for their participants. So convincing them that our project will help them means we need to understand how sweeps interfere with their organizational mission. And that means you have to understand that what these folks are doing is they're building reliable service access for people whose main way of being found is their location. So this is how they deliver medications, bring people stuff they need, pass along messages, many other favors. And when a sweep happens, all that progress gets wiped out and they have to start all over. Our appreciation of this unique challenge helps us better align our project with their organizational mission. Here's a story about institutional memory. My contacts at the Hennepin County Office to End Homelessness have made it very clear to me that they do not support this project. And that was confusing to me. But then I learned about their history. And I learned that they had really helped establish a federally qualified, coordinated entry into care system. And that meant they had to implement this tool called the VI SPDAT, circled here in red. It's essentially a screener to assess how urgent someone's need for housing is. Some researchers have since alleged that the VI SPDAT actually systematically discriminates against women and people of color. That criticism exposed the office to end homelessness to a lot of heat, and not a lot of it which was very uh, necessarily nuanced. My knowing this institutional memory is key to understanding their understandable skepticism and caution when dealing with outsiders, especially researchers. Finally, personal motivation. I've been dealing with, uh, I've been engaging with the Minnesota Department of Transportation, whose mandate is to keep transit corridors clear. And so when encampments are thought to interfere with this, they will invoke a sweep. But I also learned that my contact there has become a de facto expert on human trafficking because of her command and knowledge of Minnesota's interstate system. That triggered me to share my own research uh, working in HIV 
prevention in southern China along transit hubs where female sex workers had been working at rest stops. Our shared interest became a source of connection and trust for us that has led to further collaboration. So we may never stop being the bright-eyed, naive researchers that we are, and I don't think that's entirely bad. But now we can go about our work with some more tools to build sustainable partnerships that tackle society's most difficult problems, anti-racism being not the least. Thank you for your time. <laughs>